Did I just find a better way to make beef short ribs? In this video, I'm using a secret technique used by barbecue restaurants to make juicier and more tender beef ribs every time, so let's get smoking. In my Texas brisket secret video, I explain how top barbecue restaurants use commercial holding ovens to produce the best brisket in the world. Many of these barbecue joints started doing this out of necessity because the meat is often finished smoking long before service at lunchtime, so they need a way to hold it at food safe temperature before serving. But what I found after testing the long hold method on brisket and pork ribs and pulled pork is that it's not just a matter of convenience. This method is actually the secret to creating the best, most tender and juiciest barbecue possible. So in this video, I'm testing the long hold method on something I haven't used it on before, beef short rib. And I'm going to compare the long hold beef short ribs to some short ribs that I'm going to cook the traditional way, which is up to 200 degrees plus internal until it gets to probe tender, and then I'll rest it for two hours, and we'll see which method is better. Now a word from our sponsors. But before we get to that, I want to thank Z-Biotics for sponsoring this video. Like other barbecue dads, I like to enjoy a drink while I'm smoking meat, but I still need to be productive the next day. That's why Z-Biotics is the answer I've been looking for. Z-Biotics Pre-Alcohol Probiotic is the world's first genetically engineered probiotic, and it was invented by PhD scientists to tackle rough mornings after drinking. Here's how it works. When you drink, alcohol gets converted into a toxic byproduct in the gut. It's this byproduct, not dehydration, that's to blame for your rough next day. Z-Biotics produces an enzyme to break this byproduct down, and it's designed to work like your liver, but in your gut, where you need it most. Just remember to drink Z-Biotics before before drinking alcohol, drink responsibly and get a good night's sleep to feel your best tomorrow. I've been using Z-Biotics for a while now and I feel like it helps me be more motivated the next day and feel less groggy. But most importantly for me, it gives me that peace of mind that that toxic byproduct is being broken down before it gets to my liver and it's helping me so I don't have it in my body any longer than it needs to be. So give Z-Biotics a try for yourself. Go to zbiotics.com forward slash smoke trails BBQ to get 15% off your first order when you use smoke trails. BBQ at checkout. Zbiotics is backed with 100% money back guarantee, so if you're unsatisfied for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. Remember to head to zbiotics.com forward slash smoke trails BBQ and use the code smoke trails BBQ at checkout for 15% off. Thank you, Zbiotics, for sponsoring this video. Okay, here's our beef short ribs. They also call them beef plate ribs because they come in giant square plates. And it used to be that I cut these up individually before cooking them, but now I know better and I just cook them as they come in giant squares and then I slice them afterwards. That means that the outside ribs will be a little bit drier than the inside ones, but the very middle rib will be the best rib because it's sort of buffered by both those ribs on the other side and it's got a lot of meat around it uh, and it's just super juicy. If you get a chance at a restaurant, you can ask for the middle beef rib or one of the middle beef ribs. Those will be some of the best uh, ribs, but uh, the outside ribs are also good because they get more bark on the outside. Okay, let's slice these guys open. Swing. So what I do to trim these is I'll only really trim it if there's a ton of fat on top. A lot of this is hard fat, like the hard fat on a brisket. So you really wanna get it so that it uh, is thin. Otherwise, it's not gonna taste very good. So I'm gonna take some of this off, slice some of this off. Okay, that's all I'm gonna do with this one. Then I'm gonna take a look at this one. It looks okay. It's got this giant chunk of fat here, but I'm just gonna leave it. You guys can cut that out if you want, but I think it's gonna look nice. And if something looks nice, then it wets your appetite. And if something wets your appetite, it's gonna taste better. So I'm gonna leave that in, but you guys can let me know. Would you personally carve that out? Maybe you would, maybe you wouldn't. It's gonna kind of cut all that away and expose the bone. So I'm personally gonna leave it on. Now I'm gonna spritz these down a little bit. This is just going to help the rub stick to it. I mean, I might use some sort of beef powder or beef base, uh, either in liquid or powder form, that better than bullion stuff is really good to slather your beef ribs in. I've used all of them. I'd use any of those things. But today I'm testing out a new rub that I'm developing. I'm actually commercializing my own rub. I don't know when it's gonna be out. I'm still working on it. I've been getting friends and family to taste different versions. And I've been tweaking stuff with the manufacturer slash co-packer that I'm working with. And I'm hoping to have it out sometime this year. If you guys are interested in getting that rub when it does come out, you can sign up to the 
mailing list in the description section below. You'll be the first to get notified when it does come out. I'll probably do a limited batch. And as soon as that runs out of stock, then there's probably going to be a couple months before it comes back into stock. So if you want to be the first one to try out my new rub for brisket and uh, beef ribs, uh, then make sure to sign up for that mailing list. But this is the rub right here. It's got pepper in it. It has salt of different sizes, some powdered salt, some table salt, some flake salt. It has some beef powder, which is something that I really like in a rub because it adds sort of a beefy base to uh, your brisket or your beef short ribs. We've got MSG in it. Yes, I use MSG. If you guys watch me a lot, then you'll know that I'm not afraid to use MSG. And I think it makes brisket taste a lot better. It's also got some other, I'd call them secret herbs and spices, but you can just read the ingredient label when it comes out. Uh, it's got some other stuff in it, like, you know, you know, the typical powdered garlic and granulated onion and stuff like that. But it's, it's really tasty. And uh, it's one of my favorite brisket rubs and I'm trying to perfect it. So it's going to be really good. By the way, I'm just leaving the membrane on the beef ribs. It just keeps them together a little bit better. And you're not going to have much trouble biting through the ribs with those membranes on anyway. So I don't really worry about it that much. Okay. And now I'll do the second set of beef ribs exactly like I did the first one. After the ribs are trimmed and rubbed, I'm cutting up some splits and clearing the snow off big beefy Luigi so I can get him fired up. Now that the firebox is lit, I'm placing the ribs on the smoker. I'm cooking everything at the same time, but let's focus on how I'm cooking what I'll call the traditional short ribs first. I'm smoking the traditional ribs at 150 degrees Fahrenheit for a few hours until they start sweating out some moisture and I can see water pooling on top of the ribs. Then I'm bumping up the temperatures to 275 to 325 to start speeding up the cook and also rendering the fat on top of the ribs. We're rolling at that temp until the ribs lose much of their water weight. It's formed a nice dark bark and it's probing at around 175 to 180 internal. I'm looking for a nice dark bark with a rendered fat cap, which means that the top of the fat cap is kind of a caramel yellowish color. You can poke a finger in to check, but if you're seeing the liquid fat on top of the ribs kind of bubble and sizzle, then that's a good sign that the fat cap is rendered or soon will be. Then it's getting wrapped in butcher paper with some tallow and clarified butter and put back on the smoker until it probes tender, which usually happens at around 203 degrees internal after a 12 hour cook, but it's all about going to probe tenderness. Then it gets rested at least two hours before slicing. This is the traditional way that most barbecue is cooked. You take it up to 200 degrees plus until it gets to probe tenderness, and then you have really juicy, succulent, fall apart barbecue in most cases. But you're still going above 200 degrees internal, and that is the problem. That higher 203 to 207 degree finishing temperature will help the ribs get tender faster and render all the fat and collagen, but it also dries out the muscle fibers. It makes them kind of grainy and dry, and in some cases pot roasty. So you'll get fall apart in your mouth texture and amazing flavor from the rendered fat and collagen, but that masks the fact that the actual meat itself is dry. So that's the problem we're dealing with. And theoretically, the long hold method should take care of that. So for the second rack, which I'm calling the long hold rack, I'm smoking it all the way up to 190 degrees internal. We're staying below that 200 degrees internal mark where the muscle fibers start to really lose any remaining water retention ability that they have left. At this point, the meat is still going to be pretty tough and you wouldn't want to eat it right now. But the long hold at a low temperature is going to take care of that. So the ribs get wrapped in butcher paper with some tallow and clarified butter then wrapped in foil or an aluminum pan with a little bit of water added to help render the collagen and keep everything humid. And then it goes into a holding device to hold at 150 degrees for 15 to 20 hours. And this is where a lot of people get tripped up and things start to go wrong. If you're using an oven to hold your meat, most ovens only go to 175 degrees Fahrenheit. So you'll have to look in your manual and learn how to adjust the temperature down by around minus 25 degrees so that you can set it to 175 and the actual set temperature will be 150. But that doesn't solve your problem. You have to go an additional step and get a pan that's full of water, put it in the middle rack of your oven and you wanna tightly cover it in foil, but you want some sort of remote temperature graphing probe like a meter or a Thermalwork Signals or an Inkbird. And you wanna put the probe in the water so that you're monitoring what the temperature of the water is at all times. That is gonna be a proxy for what the temperature of 
of your brisket is going to be holding at. So then run your oven for six to seven hours at the correct set temperature, and then you'll be able to see what temperature it equalizes at and what temperature your brisket will be holding at. If that water equalizes at around 175 to 185, you know you need to go lower in set temperature. If it's much too low, like 130 or 140, you need to bump up the set temperature by adjusting your oven a couple degrees until you get a steady 150 as shown by your temperature graphing probe. That is the extent you have to go to with any holding device to ensure that you're holding at 150. And as long as you do that, then you should be fine with this method. Now that the second rack of ribs is in the holding chest, I'm heading back over to the first rack of ribs, the traditional rack of ribs, which at this point has been resting for two hours and it's ready to get sliced. All right, guys, these short ribs have been rested down and I'm ready to slice into them. But first, I'm going to pour myself a wee dram of some Legavulin 11 year. It is the Offerman edition. And my brother-in-law gave me this. And I'd like to try it out because what goes better with short ribs than single malt Scottish whiskey? Ah, it's good stuff. Smoky. Whew. Petey. Let's take a look at this bad boy. It's looking quite nice. I'm going to pour some of this tallow and butter all over this baby. And let's take a look at that. Nice bark. Really nice texture on the bark. Got a lot of pull away from the bone here on both ends. It's looking like a pretty nice short rib. Let's cut the very center rib. This is my favorite rib. It's the one that's right in the center of the short rib plate. And it is usually juicy AF. So let's see if I can do this relatively straight. A one, a two. And I'll show this to you guys before I slather it in tallow or anything like that. It looks pretty nice. It's oxidizing quite quickly, but you can see there's quite a bit of moisture. All right, let's get some tallow on this guy and I will take a bite of it. It's really tasty, super fall apart. It's exactly the texture that I like. No complaints about this beef rib actually. And it's still staying on the bone, which I like too. It's not just sliding right off. Let's see how the fat cap did here. Still a bit tough in areas, but still pretty good. If you look at it here, you can kind of see that it's a little bit grainy. It doesn't taste pot roasty at all, but you can see that the muscle fibers they're kind of a little bit grainy. They look a little bit dry. And that's because we took it above 200, 203 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's what beef always looks like when you take it that high. And I'll just pull this apart just so we can compare the other short rib later. You can see that this is just pulling right apart really nicely. These beef short ribs have been holding in my sous vide holding chest for 17 hours now. We're going to open them up and uh, see what they look like. Oh man, my favorite part. Look at that. I gotta be careful with this so it doesn't fall apart here. All right, let's get all that nice tallow on the board. And let's uh, let's take a look at these guys. It's looking pretty nice. Nice dark bark. Looks pretty similar to the last ones. The fat on top is nice and soft. I can tell this is really nice and rendered, but we'll see that more when we cut into it. So let's uh, cut one of these. And I'll give you guys a little peek here. Oh, that is looking absolutely amazing. Love it. Get some of this tallow on here to prevent it from oxidizing. And I'm going to take a, another slice here so I can get one of these middle ribs. And I'll give you guys another close up. Ooh, I'm gonna squeeze it just a little bit, just a little bit. You can see how that fat is. It's actually a lot better rendered than the last rib that we tried that was finished the traditional way, in my opinion, yeah. There's a lot more fat that's rendered in there. It looks juicier too. Okay, let's give this guy a taste. It looks a lot better. Let's see if it tastes better. It tastes better. Mmm. Oh, look at this, guys. It just pulls right off the bone. It's super juicy. It's super tender. And you tell me if you notice this compared to the last one, but the muscle fibers look a lot more juicy. They're not as grainy. They don't look overcooked. It doesn't taste pot roasty at all. It's got more beefy flavor. It's absolutely delicious. So guys, every time I try this long hold method, it turns out amazing. And the same is true for these beef short ribs. The long hold has made superior results to the traditional method, hands down. It tastes beefier. It's juicier. It just tastes a lot better. Mm. The fat is better rendered, the collagen is better rendered, and it still retained the bark. The bark is really crunchy, it's smoky, the flavor from the rub is amazing. See that? Those are the individual muscle fibers, perfectly cooked, not dry. Amazing. So what's the takeaway from this experiment? Well, in my opinion, the long hold method produces superior results with beef short ribs when compared to the traditional method of taking the short ribs up to 200 degrees plus until they get probe tender. 
That's just my opinion though. I'd love to hear your guys' experience in the comments section below. If you try this method and you have some results, then let me know what those results are. I'm always willing to listen to feedback and I'd love to hear from you guys. If you guys wanna get more involved in the Smoke Trails Barbecue community, you can join my Patreon. I'll link that in the description section below. You can get access there to a Discord chat server where you can chat with me directly and instantaneously and I can give you some advice and answer any questions you have. And you'll also get access to the great community that we are building there. We've also got the Facebook Barbecue Nerds group that you can join. You can follow me on Instagram or you could just like, subscribe and leave a comment in the comments below. All of that stuff helps the channel. So thanks so much for watching, guys. I will see you in the next video and happy smoking.